Good morning. Uh, today we'll uh, go to the end of uh, the uh, six, uh, eighth episode of the story of English, The Loaded Weapon. Uh, start, start there, go to the end. Uh, correction, I, I wrote 1840s, but I said 1880s yesterday for the potato famine, just a little correction there. Now you're going to go to Liverpool, uh, and Liverpudlians are people from Liverpool. Uh, I'm reminded of, uh, I didn't even know there was a city called Blackpool, or Blackpool. Uh, but uh, there's a story, I, I think I told it elsewhere in a course at one point, that I, I was on the ferry from uh, Calais to uh, Dover. And I was talking, uh, drinking stout, and, and talking to some guys from Blackpool. And they were having so much fun, there were three of them, they were beer smugglers actually. And they were having so much fun because I could not understand what they were saying uh, for the life of me. <clears throat> and uh, it, it was because they were from Blackpool and they were speaking in dialect. And, and I, I'd, on that trip, I had conversations in French and, and German and Spanish, I think, and Portuguese. And I managed to do it, <clears throat> but I couldn't understand them. At one point, I said to them, can you speak French? Because I thought maybe if they spoke French, I could understand them. Uh, well, as an, you know, I, I, they understood me because the way I speak is enough like the movies and television. But I couldn't understand them, not among themselves. And they, they were, it was fun. Uh, but what I remembered, I pulled away from it, was uh, at one point uh, the guy said, I see you got a flock call. I see you got a flock call. And I listened to it close enough so I guess, I see you got a flock call. I had no idea what he was saying. Well, flock, flock call, that's the way I'd spell it, is flat cap. I, in my dialect or variety, and it's, it's one of those hats without a, it, it, I see you have a flat cap, is the way uh, I would say that. <laughs> and uh, well, anyway, uh, that's a, an example of how extreme uh, English uh, varieties can be. I, I know the same is true in, in Germany for German. Well, you're going to go to New York City, see St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's one of the very few uh, true Gothic cathedrals in the United States. Uh, and on St. Patrick's Day, uh, the, the policeman is going to say, use, use. Uh, and I contrast that to yuns, yuns. Here, I, I, I tend to want to say yuns if I mean not, not just you, but there's two of you. It's plural, uh, yuns. Or, or, and, and sometimes you'd say yuz here. And I used to study that a little bit. I thought, well, is this the objective case? And this is the subjective case? And sometimes you'd say yuns. You, uh, whoops. Yuns, <laughs> well, you un, you ones or, or you, you, yuns. Uh, I, I, I think it's, I think what I meant was, was yuns. Uh, you, yeah, you, yuns, 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 yuns. Uh, we do not say yuns here, or at least the people around here don't. That, that would, well, okay, uh, but you know, it's, uh, elsewhere I've harped on this more, uh, a different year, that <coughs> the dialect is richer because it makes a distinction between the singular you and the plural you, which in standard English, there's that word standard, has died away. Notice the cut from the heart of New York City to an Irish farm. What a distinction. And I find myself, uh, you know, always in the background. I'm looking for what is it? What is it that, you know, the farm to me is beautiful. The city is horrible uh, to me. Uh, you'll hear the word standard being used. I, I don't exactly understand how he's, what he means by what he's saying there, but there's that word standard. And I wrote in steel just because I thought, well, maybe that's one of those things back in my personal quest. Maybe it's the presence of steel, those huge steel ships, that world of steel. I don't know. Anyway, I like this phrase, give yourself, to give yourself permission is politically enabling. If you give yourself permission to speak the way you want to speak, that's a political statement. That's politically enabling. You're not uh, becoming the slave to standard, uh, and then uh, and then too uh, the, the the one man says, "What language is the privileged one?" 
That's what it comes down to. And of course, ling- well, not, I shouldn't say of course, but linguists know that one language is not inherently better than another language. But languages are given status. Uh, and uh, so what is the language of status? Now, as we get to the end of this, I, I got much more comfortable once again with the story of English. And I have some idea of what's coming in the final episode. In a sense, I could say it is going to become political. Uh, and you could see it beginning right here and beginning right here. So uh, I, I really hope you'll stick with me here for the last uh, episode, which uh, will begin uh, today's Saturday. So we'll, we'll begin it Monday. Bye for now.